My name is Emily Morgan, and I'm the author of the Next Time You See series from NSTA Kids. And today I'd like to share with you the book, Next Time You See a Cloud. So I dedicated this book to my friend, Kay McLeod, a fellow cloud watcher and lover of earth and sky. And this is the quote that I chose for this book. If there is magic on this planet, it is contained in water. And that's by Lauren Isley, author of The Immense Journey. Next time you see a cloud, take some time to stop and watch it for a while. Does it stay in one place or does it move across the sky? Does the shape of the cloud remind you of anything? Is the cloud changing? growing, shrinking, stretching, or spreading? How does it compare to the other clouds you've seen? We see clouds every day and often do not give them much thought. But if you get in the habit of stopping to observe the sky, you might find that the ever-changing display of clouds is one of the most fascinating shows on Earth. Have you ever wondered what clouds are made of? Water! Clouds are made of water droplets and ice crystals that attach to tiny particles in the air. When we look at Earth from space, we can see that our planet is a water planet. We see greenish-brown areas of land, but most of our beautiful world is blue and white. There are blue oceans of water and white ice caps of water covered in swirls of white clouds of water. Have you ever wondered how clouds form? When the sun heats water on Earth's surface, the liquid water evaporates and becomes an invisible gas called water vapor. When water vapor rises into the cooler parts of the atmosphere, something marvelous happens. The vapor condenses, which means it turns back into droplets of liquid water. These droplets of water cling to particles in the air and to each other to form a cloud. Isn't it astonishing to think that clusters of liquid water droplets can float around in the air above you? Have you ever noticed that when you breathe out on a cold day, your breath instantly becomes visible? That's because the invisible water vapor in your warm breath quickly cools and condenses into tiny liquid water droplets, your very own cloud. But water droplets are clear and colorless. So why are clouds white? Clouds are white for the same reason that snow is white. When liquid water droplets or ice crystals are bunched together, they reflect and scatter the light that hits them. They do not scatter one wavelength or color of light more than any other. All the colors of light are scattered equally and combined to make white. Every once in a while, you can see the white light separated into different colors, creating a rainbow. But most of the time, the reflected light is white. As you watch the sky from day to day, you will quickly realize that there are many types of clouds. They can be small, large, thick, thin, high, low, and all kinds of shapes. But scientists recognize three main categories, cirrus, stratus, and cumulus, and each one has many variations. Cirrus clouds are feathery looking. They appear as wisps of white high in the sky and are made of ice crystals. Stratus clouds are the sheets of clouds that cover a large area. Blankets of stratus clouds can block some of the sunshine from reaching your eyes, making the clouds look gray. Stratus clouds sometimes produce a steady rain or snow. Cumulus clouds are big and puffy. You usually see these clouds when the weather is nice. But if cumulus clouds begin to grow tall, it could be a sign that the weather is about to change. As more and more water vapor quickly condenses, a cumulus cloud becomes taller and fuller. Rain begins to fall and a lot of energy is released. These tall cumulus clouds that can produce rain, hail, and lightning are called cumulonimbus clouds. 
These are the fascinating and sometimes frightening clouds that we see during a thunderstorm. As you spend more time observing clouds, you may notice white streaks that crisscross high up in the sky. These are trails of condensation that airplanes leave behind. These human-made clouds are called contrails, which is short for condensation trails. If you've ever lifted a bucket of water, you know that water is pretty heavy. Because clouds are made of water, they must be heavy too. In fact, scientists estimate that the average cumulus cloud weighs about 1.1 million pounds. That's as much as 100 elephants. If clouds are that heavy, why don't they come crashing to the ground? The weight of a cloud is spread out over a great distance and the individual water droplets and ice crystals that make up a cloud are so tiny that the warm air rising underneath them can keep them afloat. If you have ever seen particles of dust in a sunbeam, you have seen how even light currents of air can keep small particles suspended. But as a cloud grows, the droplets become bigger and heavier and the cloud eventually does fall to the ground, drop by drop as rain. Not all clouds produce rain though. Sometimes the water droplets that make a cloud are warmed by the sun and evaporate into the sky, making the cloud seem to slowly disappear. Have you ever looked up at a cloud and wondered what it would be like to be inside it? Do you imagine yourself jumping on it like a trampoline or falling backward onto it like a soft mattress? Well, if you have ever walked outside on a foggy day, you have been inside a cloud. Fog is a cloud that's on the ground. Far away in the sky, clouds look thick enough to walk on, but clouds are really just tiny droplets suspended in the air. Sometimes the shape of clouds remind us of things. It's fun to use your imagination to see different images in the clouds. What do these clouds remind you of? One of the most wonderful things about cloud watching is that you don't have to venture far or plan ahead to observe this extraordinary display. You can do it from anywhere at any time. All you have to do is step outside and look up. So, next time you see a cloud, remember that puff of white floating around in the sky is made of water. The same water that fills our oceans, lakes, rivers, and streams. Water becomes invisible as it rises from Earth's surface, then reappears in the cool air above. Water takes the form of droplets and ice crystals clinging together to produce this ever-changing display of infinite shapes and forms. Isn't that remarkable? Thank you for listening, and I hope that the next time you see a cloud, that you will see it in a whole new way. Mm -hmm.